Hi everyone, it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, I will show you how to crochet the Bahama Stripe Dishcloth. This is a fun and colorful project. It's also easy and features an interesting spike stitch in between each color row. For this project, you'll need a five millimeter H crochet hook, a pair of scissors, and a tapestry needle for weaving in your ends. You'll also need cotton dishcloth yarn. You can use any colors you like, for the one shown at the beginning of this video, I used uh, sugar and cream in the mod blue, sugar and cream in the hot green, and peaches and cream in the bright orange. However, feel free to use any colors you like. You can also use just two colors or three or more. You could do a rainbow. It's totally up to you. So let's get started. The dishcloth shown at the beginning of this video measured about six and a half inches tall and six and a half inches wide. So let's begin with the orange. We're going to begin with our starting chain. We'll put these up here. We can move these out of the way. So to begin your dishcloth, we're going to put a slip knot on our hook. To make a slip knot, wrap the yarn around your fingers and make a loop. Bring the yarn behind. Reach in with your crochet hook, bring up a loop and tighten. And we're going to chain 24. To make a chain, wrap yarn around the hook and bring it through the loop. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. So this is our starting chain. You want to make sure it's not too tight. It'll draw up the bottom of your dishcloth. So let's move on to the foundation row of the pattern. And the pattern, the written pattern, can be found on the Fiberflux blog, and it is printable. So to do our foundation row, we're going to work a single crochet in the second chain from the hook. This loop here does not count, so one, two. To make a single crochet, insert your hook into the chain and bring up a loop. Wrap yarn around hook and bring it through both loops. We're going to work a single crochet in each chain all the way across. So a single crochet, single crochet, single crochet, all the way across until we reach the end. So I've worked a single crochet in each chain across and I'm just going to finish up the row here with my single crochets and in the last chain as well. So our foundation row is complete. It'll look kind of like this. So to move on to row one, we're going to chain one and turn our work. And then we're going to work a single crochet in the first stitch, just like that, and in each stitch all the way across. So in the next stitch, work a single crochet, the next stitch, work a single crochet. We're going to do this all the way across the row. So we're coming up to the end of row one, and we're just working a single crochet in each stitch all the way across, including the turning chain at the end of the row. So row one is complete. It will look kind of like that. So let's move on to row two. To work row two, we're simply going to repeat row one. So we'll chain one and turn our work. Then we'll work a single crochet in the first stitch, just like we did in row one, and in each stitch all the way across. So 
So we're coming up on the end of row two, just working single crochets in each stitch, and then a single crochet in that turning chain at the end as well. So row two is complete. It will look kind of like this. And to work row three, we're simply going to repeat row one again by doing the same thing. So we're gonna chain one, turn our work, and work a single crochet in the first stitch and in each stitch all the way across. Just like that. And this will be the last row of the orange portion of the project. And then we'll move on to our next color. So we're coming up on the end of row three. We just worked single crochets the same way we've been doing for each row so far. And one in that turning chain. So here is the end of row three. And it'll look like this. Now what I did, we're ready to move on to the next color. So the photo at the beginning of this video shows the next color as being green. So we'll stay true to the, the original dishcloth that I crocheted and do the same color sequence. So I did orange, green, blue, orange, green, blue, and so forth. So we'll get this blue out of the way here. And what I did is I simply just cut the yarn and get the orange out of the way. And then just taking the new color, just fasten this off. And then you can put your hook right in here. Grab the yarn end, leave a little tail. Hook it around your hook, pull it through, and just tie it right on there. And I'm going to show you how to weave in the ends as you go along so you don't have to do that later. You don't want to over knot it, but you want it to be nice and secure. So you have your working yarn, and then you have these two tails. So we're going to move on to row four. We've changed our colors. We're gonna just lay the yarn across the top, both strands, and try and keep it there while we're working. And then you can take your working yarn, let's pull a tiny bit out here, put your hook in that first stitch, take your working yarn, reach in and grab it, chain one, and turn. Might need to give these a little tug just to neaten everything up a little bit. There we go. Nice and neat. So again, we're going to hold these strands along the top of our work here. Just like that. When there's a lot of little pieces, it's a good idea to keep everything nice and straight. So let's begin row four. We're holding these along the top again. So we're going to work a single crochet in the first three stitches, the same way as we've been doing. So work a single crochet, and as you work these stitches, you're also going to incorporate these strands, so it'll weave them in as we go along. So our next double, a uh, single, excuse me, single crochet, so that's one, two, and three. So we worked three single crochets across. Now it's time to work the spike. Again, we're holding this, the little tails like this. We're going to reach down two rows and insert our hook into one of those holes. Now I wanted to mention here, you can make your spikes a little shorter by not reaching down as far, or you can make them very long by reaching down a little farther. But whatever you do, just make sure you do it the same distance each time you make a spike. Okay, so we're going to reach down two rows, insert our hook, same way we would work a normal single crochet, we're just reaching down a little farther this time. Bring your yarn back up, you might need to like loosen things up a little, and it'll look like this. 
and work your single crochet just the same way you normally would. But now you have a neat looking spike in your work. So we're still holding these tails and we'll do this about halfway in. Okay, now we're gonna work three more regular single crochets. So one, just as we normally would. Two, and three. And I like to give these a little tug as we go just to keep everything nice and neat. So let's work another spike. I always like to look at the one I've just made. Let me pull this out for a minute. I always like to look at the one I've just made and kind of eyeball that line that we're creating. So right about here, this is where we would normally do it, this the stitch. But we're going to reach down a little bit farther, bring up the yarn, and work the regular single crochet. Okay, let's try that one more time. Insert your hook, reach back and grab that yarn, and pull it through. See how I'm kind of loosening things up? If you don't if you don't loosen it up a little bit, it'll kind of fold the fabric. So you want to kind of loosen it up a little bit. And then work your single crochet as you normally would. So it's looking pretty good with those spikes. Okay. Then we're going to work three more single crochets. One. Two pulling our little tails as we go along to keep everything nice and neat. Three. And we're ready to work a spike again. And at this point we're about halfway in. So let me trim these tails. What you like to do is give this a tug. Trim them off and then pull it back. Everything will disappear. Okay, so we can keep working. And now You've just eliminated a step. No more tails. So we're going to do another spike, and you can eyeball where you need it to go. We're going to reach down, bring the yarn up, keep everything fairly loose, not too loose. You don't want it to look sloppy. Fairly loose, and just work it as a regular single crochet. Just like that. Work three single crochets. Get some more yarn here. Work three single crochets. One, two, three, and then another spike. Right here, you want to reach down and bring it up. Work the stitches normal. So it's looking like a Bahama striped dishcloth, so we're going to keep going. One, two, and three. Work another spike. I'm eyeballing it, I can see it's right along this line here. Bring the yarn up, work the stitch as you normally would, and then work three more single crochets to finish off the row. Okay, so row four is complete. To finish your dishcloth, you're gonna simply keep repeating rows one through four until you reach the desired length. I like nice and square dishcloths. You can make yours more rectangular if you wish. Uh, but you just want to keep repeating rows one through four until you get the length. Uh, we already have the length, but to get the height that you'd like. But you want to end on row three when you when you get to where you want to be. I worked mine just until the width and the height were equal, and that made a nice square shape. So to keep going, I'll just show you a little bit 
of how you would keep going. You work the stitches in, into these spikes on the other side the same way you normally would. So we're just going to chain one, turn, and just work single crochets all the way across the first stitch and every stitch across same way we would and you'll work them the same way in those spike stitches see I'm just working it the same exact way like that okay so they'll just be worked the same way so that is how you crochet the Bahama striped dishcloth. I wanted to show you really quick, you're gonna have, even though we weaved in the ends on the color changes, we'll still have this end when we're finished and you'll have one more end when you finish um, up here and fasten off when you're finished your dishcloth. So you just thread your tapestry needle with a little tail and then just run it through. Well, we'll do it this way, there we go. We'll just run it through here And then back up just to get everything secure, nice and neat looking. It's important to have nice and neat finish work to make your projects really stand out and to show off all your hard work. We just snipped that and then you can pull it to make it disappear. So that is how you crochet the Bahama Stripe dishcloth. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the red subscribe button to get all the latest Fiber Flux video updates. Thanks again.